Welcome everybody to HYB 102, Incrementally Adopting Istio. Uh, my name is Sundip Parikh. Unfortunately, my co-presenter Tahir couldn't be here today. Uh, he ended up not getting his passport with his visa back in time to make it all the way here from Singapore. So he couldn't make it, uh, but he was, he was very upset about it. He had a lot of good stuff to share. So we're going to find another way for him to get some of the slides that he was going to present back out to you all uh, at another time. So today, we're going to cover the what, the why, and the how of Istio. Uh, due to scheduling, I think this session would have been better served on earlier on Tuesday, uh, before a lot of the other service mesh and Istio sessions that kicked off. But uh, I don't make the rules on that, so we'll have to go talk to people in marketing about that later on. Uh, so this is coming sort of in the middle of some of the 200 level stuff, and some of the 300 level things are, are still happening tomorrow as well. Uh, but just for, for my own, actually, uh, education, I'd love to know how many of you, by a show of hands, have used Istio or played with Istio at all? Oh, shit. That's a, that's a big number. Um, what about uh, Istio in production? Who's got Istio in production? OK, awesome. Very cool. By the way, I hope you all saw who raised their hands so you can go talk to them if you've got questions after the talk is over. All right. So just a quick little bit about me. I'm a a uh, developer advocate or a cloud native advocate, the title changes all the time, for Google Cloud. Uh, and before Google, I worked at uh, MongoDB and Apple and a bunch of other random startups. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, or at GitHub with the same username. It's, people always ask, it's Circus Monkey minus the vowels. Uh, and the content that I'm going to talk about today is up in a repo there as well, and I'll have the link at the end. So you guys can pull that down. I'm going to do a little bit of slides and just a little bit of demo at the end. Uh, but all the material is actually uh, like a fully baked you know, set of tutorials you can walk through. All right, so let's start with why Istio, right? We've just finished kind of getting into Kubernetes and be comfortable there, and now we're going to add another layer of abstraction on top of it. Why do we want to do this, right? Why is Istio so critically useful and important to deployments? Right, we have containers. Containers are great. We love containers, right? It lets us be really portable and get out of this whole, like, it worked on my machine, but not over there in, in, in production. So we can get this sort of unified environment, get this great packaging. Containers, awesome. Kubernetes, also great. Right? It does a lot of great things for us. It orchestrates those containers really well, lets us schedule them out and bin pack them very tightly into a cluster. Really powerful. But microservices deployments are hard by their, by their just very nature. Right? You have a bunch of services strewn across a cluster. Teams are iterating at different paces. You've got dependencies you don't even know about. Right? Again, spread out across this whole thing. Applying policy, applying control is challenging in that environment. Right? Istio helps us get from that sort of, sort of mess on the left to something that's more organized and functional on the right. If you think about some of the, again, that higher level of abstraction, right? So we've moved on from just containers and pods and, and scheduling them and deploying them into a cluster. But again, if you think about that next level up, what makes those microservices deployments hard, right? So a, a good example is canary releases or doing blue-green or, or, you know, traffic splitting. If you want to do that in Kubernetes today, you actually have to run the correct ratio of pods. So if you want to do something like a 90-10 split to test out, you know, V1 versus V2, You'd actually have to run you know, nine pods of V1 and one pod of V2 to make sure you've got that 90-10 split. That's kind of a pain. that It requires a little too much hand-holding to really work well. Um, you don't really know who you're talking to, right? Your services could have a, a person in the middle or a service in the middle there. Or you could be opening yourself up to some kind of attack or injection. Right? You want to make sure that services are, know who they're communicating with back and forth. You want to be able to quickly dig into high latency drivers. Again, if you think of a microservices deployment, you may have a web request that comes in the front end, but it may travel around to a number of other services. Well, how do you know if it's slow? Right? The end user might feel like, well, this is taking 500 milliseconds or over 1,000 milliseconds, but it might not be the front end. It might be one of the various back ends that that front end is talking to. And there's a whole host of other things, right? Like digging into L7 attributes, like request headers. We can't do that right out of the box in Kubernetes. You can't really control who accesses services, and you can't track requests from start to finish. So you don't have a level of visibility to match, again, the complexity of the deployment you're doing. 
So that's a little bit of why we think Istio is really powerful, because it gives you access to all these. So again, we've talked about service mesh. Many of you obviously have played with Istio, so you have some, some understanding here. But I like to start with this idea of what is Istio, right? Istio, if you think of it in any, you know, if, if you boil it down to its kind of simplest concept, Istio is about automation. Right? It goes beyond, I think, what just a, a, a sort of a service mesh. I don't think that really encapsulates it. Istio gives you this power to apply policy and control to your entire deployment, whether it's five services or 500 services. You can take a single rule and say, I want to turn on MTLS and make every service mutually authenticate to each other with one rule, and that goes cluster-wide right, or namespace-wide, depending on how you roll it out. So the three things that Istio kind of gives you around in, the, in those areas of automation are, one, very uniform observability, right? Metrics, logging, tracing, right out of the box. Operational agility, which is a fancy way of saying, I think, a lot of traffic and networking control. And then a very deterministic, policy-driven security model. So if you dig in a little bit further, with telemetry, you can examine all of that traffic in and out of those services and in and out of your cluster as well with very little to no instrumentation in many cases. Right? That's incredibly powerful. You could take the responsibility of adding in things like latency and tracing outside of the hands of developers and say, you don't have to worry about instrumenting this as a starting point. We'll learn a lot just by putting this thing and running it with Istio. Same thing is true of traffic. You can take the networking control outside of the application make that a loosely coupled structure. So applications can be deployed however they need to be. Your services can be deployed in whatever way makes sense. But then the cluster operator can decide how traffic splitting should happen, how rollout should happen. And then finally, security, obviously. right? Being able to secure access and communication between services or add authentication policies to individual services, or all of them, <laughs> depending on how you want to roll it out. So at a glance, Istio is Again, it, it does add complexity, right? We're, we're sort of solving complexity by adding some other complexity. So that's a little bit of a trade-off uh, in terms of how much it has to happen. But if you think about it, what you're effectively trying to do is, one, narrow the problem space a little bit. You're trying to tell your application teams, take the complexity away from them. You're saying, don't worry about networking control. Don't worry about some of the telemetry aspects. Don't worry about security. We'll take that complexity away from them, and we'll put it on the, on the cluster operator, but then we'll give them, again, that automation to apply those things in a much more granular way and be able to, again, incrementally roll it out. So if you start with the most basic component, that's the Istio sidecar proxy. And you'll see that little, that little hexagon over there. That's actually the Envoy logo. So the Istio sidecar is powered by Envoy, right? It's effectively the Envoy proxy. Envoy is a fantastic project. Fantastic piece of code. It's very high performant. And because it lives in your pod right alongside your application container or your services container, they share the same network space, which means it can actually capture and filter through all the traffic going in and out. So it adds a thin little layer of control over the traffic going in and out of your containers. The next part is, uh, I guess, what we would call the sort of the data plane. Right? Which things are sort of generating and pushing data out or implementing rules? Again, that's the Envoy proxy piece itself. But when you kind of slice across your cluster, we consider those proxies as the quote unquote data plane in the cluster. And this is something you can deploy today. You can take the Envoy open source proxy and deploy it as part of your containers or part of your pods today. What's missing is a central control plane to deliver rules and configuration to those proxies. And that's really what Istio provides. It kind of packages this whole thing up and gives you a unified control plane with a series of components to push rules and configuration information out. And so inside that control plane, there's, there's three main components. Right? And there's actually a fourth one I didn't mention here, Galley, which is responsible for handling some of the configuration components. But the three main ones that we tend to deal with on a regular basis are Pilot, Mixer, and Citadel. So Pilot's responsibility is taking in the rules that you give it and making sure they get back out to all, those to all those proxies. So at any point in the lifetime of your cluster, your deployment, you can see all of your pods and the rules that Pilot has sent out and figure out which ones have synced and which ones haven't, which ones have gotten the latest version of the rules, which ones haven't. So you have that control there. 
Uh, Mixer's job is, is to take metrics and telemetry data that come out of those proxies and then send them downstream to the telemetry backend of your choice, whether it's Prometheus, Grafana, Stackdriver, you name it. And the last one, Citadel, is responsible for managing certificates. So its job is to make sure everybody's got the right certificates and keys and authentication information, and it does the magic of rotating those things around all on its own. So that's a little bit of the components of Istio, but what does Istio really do for you, right? Let's, if we get into some of that detail. So if we start with observability or observing, as I mentioned, you get automatic tracing, logging, and monitoring by default. So as long as you send your logs out to localhost, as long as you publish your metrics on, uh, you know, in, in known good endpoints, and you, whether you do or you don't actually add any tracing information, it can actually still de uh, deliver some tracing information out from your applications. So those proxies, they send that tracing and that telemetry data to Mixer, and Mixer has a, a, a well-formed adapter API that lets it send all that data to particular backends. And you could, again, split these out. So you may say, well, if I'm running in, in GKE inside of Google Cloud, maybe I want to use Stackdriver logging and Stackdriver trace, but you really love Prometheus and Grafana, by all means, you can put those two together. So you could have that mix of different backends and components depending on the piece you want. You could even have it so you would to push metrics to Prometheus and to Stackdriver if you wanted to. There's no real limit to how you can configure this. For connecting services, right, that kind of operational agility component is really where the networking piece comes in. There's a few objects that are really dedicated specifically to networking inside of Istio, and those are virtual services, destination rules, gateways, and service entries. And so those, in some combination of one or more of those, they let you do things like traffic splitting, traffic steering, right, from one version to another, fault injection, circuit breaking, and egress control which is really powerful, right? If you have a lot of services that call external APIs, this is a really powerful way to put some control over that. But more importantly, for, as a security mechanism or to form a better security posture, let's say you have a, a bad Docker image that you pulled and deployed, maybe a malformed tag or maybe something got injected into that container. Well, if you lock down egress control, that means nobody can make outbound, recall, outbound API calls or outbound calls unless you've specifically allowed that service. So now you're getting just sort of this free kind of perimeter around your deployment just by having that proxy and having this infrastructure in place. If we dig in a little bit to some of the traffic splitting and traffic steering, the way the Envoy proxy works is you send rules up to Pilot in that configuration. Pilot sends those rules to in those individual proxies. So now those proxies themselves know how to route traffic around from one to the other. So in the top example, we've got service A and service B. Service B has, a, has you know, different versions that it might have. If you just rely on Kubernetes routing, you get round robin routing, right? So you basically get an equivalent amount of requests spread across here. So in the example, uh, in the right side, in the upper right there example, you might see like 25% going to each pod. With Istio, we can actually control this and say, well, we want 95 and five. We want to have a canary version that we roll out very slowly. On the bottom example, that's really where we get into things like traffic steering. Again, because of the way Envoy works, it can actually inspect the headers coming in to your applications. So that means that we can actually say, based on maybe a header value, I might want to direct traffic to a particular version or a particular pod. So for example, you could say, hey, for logged in users running on iOS with WebKit version XYZ, direct them to this Canary rollout test or this other version of that service. So you have that level of control that you didn't have just, again, with, with sort of vanilla Kubernetes. And as I mentioned earlier, you can also inject things along the way. And these are really not necessarily things you're going to use in a production environment, but from more of like a testing and resiliency perspective. You may want to inject things like delay, sort of retries, or even other connection rules. Circuit breaking is a good example. You can inject a circuit breaker inside of this path between services and control you know, whether you want cascade failures to happen or if requests start to fail, just cut off access immediately. So you're not seeing, your, your end users aren't seeing sort of high latency waiting for errors to time out all the way through. And as with a lot of the way Istio works, those rules can match very particular conditions 
and be directed at a percentage of requests, not all requests or just some. So you have, again, very granular control that you can really implement across your platform. On the security front, four main components that really stand out, right? Encrypting traffic between services, uh, authenticating services or service authentication, service to service, I should say, um, auditing control, and access control policies, right? Again, very powerful stuff. Think of it this way. I can implement, again, mutual TLS is a good example, and actually one that a customer came to us with. They were told by one of their downstream customers that they needed to encrypt traffic between all services, and Istio was the fastest way for them to get there because they redeployed their pods with the sidecar proxy and then flipped a bit with one rule to turn on mutual authentication across everything there. And that's really powerful. The security model, it, this diagram's a little bit hard to read in a few spots. The point is it's kind of rolling together all of the security parts of the infrastructure that you can kind of inject along the way. So requests are coming in on the far left and sort of traversing through to the far right on the egress side. And you can see where Citadel's issuing certificates, where things like service authentication, maybe with JAW tokens or MTLS between services is happening. So you have, again, this, this level of control that's not really possible without another higher level tool. So that's a little bit of the background of you know, the why and sort of the what of Istio. But how do you put Istio to work for yourself, right? And this is where I want to get to this idea of incrementally rolling it out. Because like with any new technology, you don't really want to start and go from zero to 100% on day one. You want to find the features that make the most sense and then start rolling those out bit by bit. So the easiest way to get started with Istio is, uh, actually we built something inside of Google uh, Kubernetes Engine, a little add-on that lets you deploy Istio by default or, or along with your cluster deployment. So using either G Cloud or the, the Cloud Console, you can actually spin up a Kubernetes cluster, and there's a little section called add-ons, and just check the box for Istio, and then pick a security approach, whether you want permissive or strict. And for the purposes of this example, I used uh, MTLS permissive just to make things a little bit easier. But that's something I started with here. So this is an easy way to get Istio. But frankly, installing the OSS version is not that terribly challenging either. Right? Grab the latest release, apply it via the Helm chart, and you're off and running. And with the Helm chart, you get the level of customizability you might want. So for example, maybe you decide today, I only really care about telemetry. Only get the components that worry about telemetry. Don't worry about having the traffic components or the security components. You can always upgrade to that later on using Helm. So Helm gives you that power and flexibility. Um, and there's also a quick start inside the Istio repo as well that just deploys everything. So you have a couple of different options for how to get the software running inside of your cluster. Once you do this, and once this cluster comes up, you end up with a bunch of pods running inside the Istio system namespace. And again, it's all those things we saw earlier, Pilot, Citadel, Galley, among other things like, depending on which version you installed, OSS, or whether you're using the one that we package here for you. If you use this version, we install all the stack driver adapters for you by default. If you use OSS, it comes with Prometheus and Grafana out of the box. So you have a couple different options there. But once you've got this up and running, once the system is ready, you can actually start to include the sidecar proxy inside of your pods. And there's two ways to do it. The bottom way is the way we see a lot of folks do it, which is basically taking a namespace and saying, anything that gets deployed to that namespace, by default, just auto-inject the sidecar proxy. Or you have the other approach of saying, well, I'm going to do it on a per sort of YAML basis. Every time I push a new service, I'm going to filter my YAML through this Istio control binary that adds in the, the appropriate piece to your pod spec. So it includes the sidecar proxy. So there's a couple different ways to kind of get started there. But if you're rolling it out, what I would say is don't start with auto injection, right? You don't want the pod out right yet. Again, it really comes down to the features that you're most interested in. The other thing I would also say, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is start with permissive MTLS. You can always turn it on later, but when you first turn it on, if you go with strict, it might start to break things, so you might want to roll it out, again, on a case-by-case a -case or service-by-service -service basis. So that's just a little bit of getting started. Let's go through a couple of, or a few example, kind of incremental rollouts, right? And again, think of the state of the cluster as, we've got Istio up and running, we're not auto-injecting the sidecar proxy yet. 
So for traffic management, let's say you've got a simple deployment here. And I wrote a little sample app called Weather Info because I was getting really tired of the built-in book info. I just decided to make another one. Uh, and it's got a, a front end and two different back ends, right? This just pulls the weather from an external API. Uh, V1 pulls it from a single city, and V2 pulls it for four cities and just displays it out. So nothing fancy. But let's say we want to roll this out in a way, again, using Istio incrementally, but we still want to take advantage of some of the traffic features that are available. So how do we do that? Right, quick recap on traffic splitting, just to remember, just to remind y'all. Right, we have this approach where we want to try to get this 95.5. Now, the, the difference here is that all of these examples, they've got the sidecar proxy in them. So the question is, and this is a question I asked myself about six months ago, how can I do this kind of traffic splitting without having to roll the sidecar proxy out? It turns out there's a little bit of a cheat and a way to do it. It's not necessarily the way I would recommend for everything, especially for full-blown kind of large-scale production deployments, but as you're testing things out and getting acquainted with the rules and infrastructure, it's a way to kind of play with the networking APIs before, again, you go wide with it. So what we're going to try to do here, our goal is to get to 90-10. And remember, without Istio, right, without anything by default, Kubernetes will just do round-robin 50-50 across both of these. So that's where we're starting from. We're starting from 50-50. Now, this little little box there is, is Istio, right? And I've got a little ingress gateway that's, got, that's allowing inbound traffic at the top. So for us to get to this, there's a few components we have to deploy to make it work. So using a virtual service and a destination rule, we can actually direct traffic from weather front end to weather back end V1 at 90% and V2 at 10% by directing traffic through the ingress gateway. So again, rolling it out a little bit slowly, but getting a chance to test this out in a, in a kind of a measured approach. So the traffic policy we want to do for, for this is, the first thing we do is create a destination rule. And as you can imagine by the name, a destination rule kind of tells inbound traffic where to go. So it's saying, I want to direct traffic to these possible subsets. So in this example, all the destination rule is really saying is, create some subsets of my service, in this case, single and multiple is what I called them. Right? So we've got a subset for single and a subset for multiple. I just want to have those on record as being things I can direct traffic to later on. And then we create the gateway component. We connect the gateway to the rest of the, of the infrastructure. So what we're saying here is we're going to open up a port 80 on the gateway. We're going to do it for all hosts. Again, this is just a demo example. I wouldn't do this in real world. I wouldn't do this in production. All we're telling it here is we're going to set up a gateway connected to the Istio ingress gateway that comes with Istio by default, which is just another Envoy proxy. And we're going to tell it to open up port 80. And then we can actually create a virtual service that tells requests when they get to the ingress gateway where to direct them to. So remember, we had those named subsets of single and multiple a couple of slides back. So here we can call it out specifically. We attach this virtual service to that, to that gateway we just created. We match on a very particular endpoint, in this case, slash API slash weather. And then we tell it to just traffic split those two across the single version and the multiple version at a 90-10 split. So that's it, we're done. Any traffic coming th in through that ingress gateway is now gonna go across those two subsets. So that's good, we've solved, kind of the, we've solved some of the basic traffic splitting problem, but we haven't actually connected the weather front end component to it yet. So the last step in that process is to update the deployment. Excuse me. All we're changing here is we're changing the back end location. And so this is actually in the weather front end deployment spec uh, for, my piece, for the components that's running in Kubernetes. All it did is change the host name of where it's supposed to send traffic to. Now it's going to send it through the Istio ingress gateway instead. So really, the only service that had to change here, that had to be redeployed, if you will, was the weather front end component. Once you push this out, all the traffic will now start to go through that other, that other piece, the ingress gateway, and then it'll get split there. So we did this without deploying any Envoy proxies across those pods that were there. Again, the nice way to do this is or the nice thing about this is that you're not having to redeploy or update infrastructure. You're not having to inject the sidecar quite yet. And it's a good way to sort of test and get familiarity with the components, with the APIs that are available to you. But that's one example of just kind of rolling it out. What about security? How do you roll out security in a measured and controlled manner? So in this case, 
we are going to have to have injection turn on because really, at the end of the day, for you to make use of any security infrastructure, you've got to have the sidecar proxy included in those pods to enforce those policies. So here, what we did is we've got two namespaces in our cluster, one I called legacy, which is some uh, vanilla service, and one called secure. And in the secure namespace, I have Istio in auto injection turned on. So that means when I deployed weather front end, weather back end, they got the Envoy proxy in those pods. So now what we want to do is we want to slowly roll out MTLS. We want to roll it out so we secure the infrastructure in the secure namespace, and we want to allow traffic from the legacy namespace. So the first thing we do after we get these services up and running is start with a security policy. And for those of you that are paying really close attention, I had to shorten the names of the API versions to fit on the slide. So when you, if you have to happen to look at these later on, don't copy from here, copy from the GitHub repo uh, that actually has the correct YAML specified there. But here what we did is we are setting an empty, we're setting up the backend service, we're turning on a policy there for security. We're saying we want it to have a permissive policy so that anybody can connect to it from within that cluster. So the net effect is that this service now has access to connect here, right? So now it has a permissive policy you can connect, and weather front end was not impacted by this. It was because it's got the Envoy proxy already. It can already connect to it. And now what we can do is apply a destination rule that's saying anybody that's got the proxy as part of their pod can use mutual authentication. So what this is doing is, again, slowly rolling out MTLS to all the services that can take advantage of it. So this destination rule, all it says is, use the Istio mutual mode. That means if you are capable of doing MTLS, let's go ahead and do it. So the net effect there is that now we've got mutual TLS happening between front end and back end, but still maintaining permissive access to weather back end. By the way, and that rule was, was kind of underspecified, right? I left it a little bit open about who could connect to it. You can actually get way more fine-grained and say only certain services can utilize that permissive mode. So you have that ability to control at a very fine-grained level about who can access that thing without using mutual authentication. But now what were to happen if we turn on strict, right? If we, if we take it from a permissive mode or mutual mode to strict, right? Once we implement this policy and update that policy from saying permissive to strict, that means anybody that doesn't have the proxy, that can't do MTLS, won't be able to connect to this. Because what they're missing are the certificates from things like Citadel and the configuration from Galley to make it work. So this is an easy way to start with, right, again, remember the cluster we deployed was set to permissive mode. So that was already kind of an open setup, but we, with Mutual, we are actually able to turn on MTLS again on that service by service basis. Anybody that could do it would use it. And then once we transition to strict, we cut off access to legacy clients. So this is a good way to think about, again, it's a demo and I couldn't fit that much information on a slide, but think about how you might, again, slowly roll this kind of thing out across a larger environment, right? If you map this kind of problem to five, 500, 1,000 services, it's an easy way to enforce policy and enforce security very quickly and to start encrypting traffic between services immediately. So that was an incremental rollout of security. What about telemetry, right? This is another, I think, key feature of Istio where, again, you get that monitoring and that tracing and logging for free. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I, I, I love hitting it as much as I can. Without additional instrumentation, you get this output directed to your choice of backend. So what are the, some of the metrics that you get by default that you get for free? So you get things like request count, request duration. Particularly for HTTP, you get things like size of request body, the response body size, and then for TCP services, you get additional information like bytes sent, bytes received. And this is actually for source and destination as well, so you get variations for both. So you can actually track, again, traffic inbound to your pod, traffic outbound, and control and understand the telemetry and what's happening there. So these metrics just start getting published, and again, in open source Istio, they go straight to Prometheus. In the version that you can install directly through G the GKE console, they go straight to Stackdriver. That's it. So at this point, what I'd like to do is switch to the demo. Can 
Can everybody read that okay, or is that big enough? All right, no one said no. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna make sure we're on the right cluster here. So I'm in my hybrid 102 cluster, and we can show you what's running on here. So I've got that uh, example app I talked about before, the weather front end with weather back end single, weather back end multiple, and I got a little load generator script that's generating and pushing traffic through. And so what I wanted to show you first is uh, the stack driver trace component. So this is, again, I didn't change anything in my code, I didn't instrument, I didn't add anything to it. All I did is turned on Istio, deployed, these, uh, deployed those containers with the sidecar proxy auto-injected, and then it started sending data to stack driver trace immediately. And so I just did this earlier today so that it doesn't have an automatic report there, but we can actually dig in a little bit further. So this is the stack driver trace UI. Um, it'll by default give you things like insights over the last seven days, or it'll create some auto analysis reports for you, or you can actually just dig into individual URLs or requests yourself. So if I go over here to the trace list, I can actually look and see, at the, I can look at the latency of the requests that are coming in. Again, everything's being generated by that load generator script right now. But I can actually drag along here and figure out, so let's pick this little section there. I had a couple of high requests, so I can look here and say I've got a request that was 301 milliseconds. If I dig into that one completely, one, I get this timeline, so I can see again the request and how long it took. And then over here on the right, I get a lot more detail about things like the timestamp, and then I get to see things like where it came from, and I think that's where it's really important. So I can actually go here and say the source workload was weather front end, right? The URL was API weather. This agent that's using the track is the agent that's built into the sidecar proxy, or built into Mixer, I should say, and where that traffic was going. So we get some level of detail here. I can also filter and go back, and let's say I wanna just look at the external API calls I'm making to the weather map API. So I can say sent.api and filter request there. And now here I can see that most of my requests are, are staying in this under 50 milliseconds boundary, but we've got a couple that have taken a little bit longer. And we can see, again, the timeline it took for that request to go out and the workload that that came from, right? So in this case, it came from the weather backend multiple service, and here's the actual URL it was requesting. And I didn't add any tracing here, so I haven't done anything to my code to enable this. Now, as you can probably imagine, this isn't telling me a whole heck of a lot of information, right? Because Envoy can track those requests from one proxy to another, it's capable of showing you this data. If you want to get that next level of information, if you want to know, well, once it enters that request, once that request hits one of my methods in my, you know, in my code, I want to know which line or which section of that code is taking a long time. If you want that level of detail, you'll have to actually go in and instrument. And you have your choice of different instrumentation libraries, like either Zipkin or Open Census, depending on which one makes the most sense for you. But once you have that level of instrumentation, what you would actually see here is a much more granular kind of bar graph of the different sections of your code and how long they took. So you get a much better and clearer idea of what's actually happening across there. The nice thing about that is you don't only have to add the tracing statements into your code, you don't actually have to worry about where to send it. Because again, the proxy's capturing that tracing reporting data on its way out, and it's actually forwarding it onto Mixer, and Mixer's actually posting it to the back end. So that's a quick run through of the tracing components here uh, inside of Stackdriver Trace. Let me quickly show you all what it looks like if you were to look at the open source Prometheus and Grafana. So let me just quickly forward the port over from Prometheus. And I'm doing this from a different cluster uh, that's running in another project. All right, so that's forwarding across. We can open up Prometheus now. And inside Prometheus, you know, if you get the, if you've ever seen the sort of default Prometheus piece here, you can actually start filtering by Istio metrics. So you can look at sort of Istio total requests and add, whoops. Which is not very exciting, right? Looking through all this. Uh, it's a lot of information and a lot of data. It's not really sort of eminently visible by default here, even if you kind of graph it out. 
What's nicer is when you dig into it using Grafana. So the Prometheus and Grafana that come with OSS Istio are pre-configured to be tightly coupled and work together. So Grafana's already pulling data right off that Prometheus uh, instance. So if I do the same thing here, but change that port forwarding to Grafana, you actually see a lot of interesting metrics in Grafana as well. The other nice thing about the instance of Grafana that we package in for you is that it comes with some canned Istio-specific dashboards. So once you load the Grafana main dashboard, you go over to the kind of the manage section, which is what I did, and there should be an Istio folder there. You can open that Istio folder, and now we can actually start to say, well, I want to dig into the service dashboard in particular. Inside the service dashboard, right, it opens with any of the services that I'm calling. So because I have a service entry inside of Istio for api.openweathermap.org, it creates a service entry for that here, so I can browse by that. So I can actually see the client the request volume, the success rate. This one's not that interesting. But if we look at the weather backend, that gets a little bit more interesting, right? We can see the request volume, the success rate, and if we continue on down, incoming requests and response code, right? The success rate or the duration for some of these calls. Again, highlighting our ability to kind of dig into these calls that might be taking quite a long time. Right, this one's showing us that at the 99th percentile, it's returning about 950 milliseconds, which is quite a bit. And there's some TCP-specific ones here that aren't filled in as well. Same thing is true, again, of the weather front end. You can see those dashboards and look at that traffic information. Or you can switch to the, the uh, let's see, where's the Istio workload dashboard. Right, another way to kind of look at the information here. So we'll switch to the default namespace, and we'll look at whether backend multiple. Let's pick on just one of those services. So again, we can see how long things are taking, the duration by source, response size, et cetera. And we can see all the outbound and outgoing requests as well. So this is built in, right? All of those metrics I mentioned earlier those things automatically get captured by Envoy. Envoy collects that telemetry and then sends it off to Mixer. Mixer forwards it on from you. And if you remember the Istio at a glance image, right, there's a lot of control plane components. And they function very much the same as the Kubernetes control plane does. If one of those pieces goes down for some unspecified amount of time, you're not locked out of the traffic routing, right? You might not be able to push any new rules or new policies while maybe pilot is down but the rules that were already pushed out and in place, those are still being honored by Envoy. So, right? Just like if you lose the Kubernetes API master for a certain amount of time, your pods and your containers are okay, you just can't schedule anything new. So you've got a little bit of a window of time before things really turn ugly to fix things up. And particularly in the case of telemetry, if Mixer goes down or if you lose access to that Mixer component, Envoy will actually retry to send telemetry so you won't have these dropouts over time of metrics missing because Mixer wasn't available for some bit there. Uh, so can we switch back to the slides? Perfect. All right, so where do you go from here, right? We have a couple of examples or a few examples of how you can roll Istio out in a slow, measured manner across an existing infrastructure or existing cluster. And I would say the, the two features that stand out among you know, what we hear from customers and users in the ecosystem our, our telemetry and security, right? Folks really love the ability to sort of deploy Istio and then get this telemetry information very quickly, right? Because that's a, quite a bit to be able to use right off the bat. And they also love the security aspect, right? Those two features alone, I think, are enough to make Istio worth it. So what I would challenge you to do is think about, if Istio makes sense for you in a production workload, figure out which of those things make sense. Do you want it for traffic, telemetry, security? and then spend enough time where you feel comfortable with those APIs before you start rolling it out, and do it again in that incremental fashion, right? You can actually roll things out and say, well, we're gonna deploy it not to the default namespace, we'll do it to a separate namespace, and we'll try things out there before we roll it out to default or to other ones where you might have production workloads. Some light reading to get you started. Uh, Megan, actually, who was the previous speaker in this room, um, gave it, uh, both of us worked together on a series of blog posts called the Service Mesh Era. And they're good conceptual overviews, but they've actually got practical tutorials built into each one of those. And they go through a lot more depth here around traffic splitting, canary rollouts, 
uh, telemetry stuff, there's a security one as well. And actually the last one in the series focuses on some more advanced topics in Istio like mesh expansion, adding in VMs, right? We have a lot of workloads that still exist on VMs. I know I went very Kubernetes-centric here, but we want to make VMs just as easy as we want to make it with containers. So you can deploy and expand your mesh now with VMs, but it's still a little bit more work. It's not as easy as just injecting the sidecar. But she's got a great example there. And then there's also examples of running Istio in a multi-cluster deployment, whether you have a single control plane in one cluster or you have multiple control planes. So you can have either one or both of those setups. So that's a great series. I would definitely advise you to take a look at that. And then uh, the traffic portion of this came from a blog post that I wrote a few months ago called you know, Incremental Istio with Traffic Management. So that's another good example. It goes into a little bit more depth of how you could roll it out. And there's also great docs on MTLS migration and some of the conceptual things. The last two links are links to my personal GitHub where I have that weather info app if you want to just have a quick little example. Again, I like that one because it requires you to make that service entry for outbound API access, and it's got a couple other nice little components in there to try out. And then all the stuff I went through, all that YAML that I truncated in a couple of slides is actually in this repo, Next19 Incremental Istio. So it's all there if you want to run through this end to end and roll out traffic slowly or roll out some of the security stuff slowly. There's a fully baked example there. Before I close out, I do want to mention a few other talks that are happening tomorrow. These are a little bit more 200 and 300 level, but I think they're really good. Tomorrow morning, actually, Megan and I are going to give a talk on how to debug your deployments inside of Istio. Right? So this is an example of you deployed Istio, you deployed your services with the sidecar proxy, and something broke. Right? And we're going to take you through three or four examples of things like how do I debug traffic deployments or traffic errors? How do I debug telemetry? Right? What if you have custom metrics? How do you get those to show up inside that Prometheus that you've got as part of open source Istio? And the last one is a uh, security one. We're going to go through, I think, some work with MTLS and JWT tokens as well. So that's a very much a, a demo-centric, specific ex exercise uh, for debugging, or troubleshooting, I should say. But then we've got a few other ones as well. Um, particularly, I mentioned the uh, adding Istio for VMs and expanding the service mesh. So that's tomorrow as well. Second to last but not least, uh, we would love your feedback about how to make a better service mesh product, right? You guys have, we love the input from people who are using Istio, who are played with Istio, who are interested in using Istio. Why, what drives that, right? We wanna help improve as much as we can. So this is feedback that we use to make the commercial version better as well as the open source version. So by all means, sign up, fill out this form. We'd love your feedback and your help. And then finally, thank you.